So it could actually gauge by your facial movements, your eye contact with the camera, as to how engaged you were with the conversation. And it would actually score you. Like this guy's really engaged at this point when you were talking about X, but when you started talking about Y, the engagement just dropped, right? Subtle differences about eye contact, uh, body language. Now, imagine you're in a job interview and you've got this going on. You almost have to game the AI. You have to try and, you know, as well as thinking about your answers, thinking about the conversation, trying to make a good impression, you've now got this other extra burden of, I need to make sure I'm looking at that camera. I need to make sure I'm engaged all the time. I need to game the AI that's scoping me out and potentially could influence the outcome of, of this interview. Mm, and that, that's a really interesting example, I think, because again, it's obviously giving behavioral scores based off of this person was disinterested. This is, you know, and I think, again, it, it, AI and correct me if I'm wrong, but AI is almost a, a it's a standardization of, of data. It's so if you look at LLM, it's giving you a, a statistical probability of an answer to your question most of the time. So it's almost um, getting all of the data and providing you with the most likely answer, which is somewhere in the middle. It's usually the sort of median answer. Yeah. Um, and so they, I think the problem in your example is taking people and then if they're in an interview format, the people that already do badly interviews, so plucking an example off the top of my head, it might be neurodiverse, you know, people with, sure. with autism. Mm -hmm. um, so those people will probably suffer even more because they've now got an extra hurdle to jump over, um, as well as all of the other normal interview hurdles sort of trying to fit into this sort of bracket.